Hello friends. Sorry that episode 16 got interrupted. I'd let the camera memory become full. So this is a short episode 17 to go with the short episode 16. Gus had just quoted a German pro proverb and was about to translate it into English. The English was, in politics it's like a concert. Untrained ears take the tuning of the instruments for music. Gus added, my father used to say the instruments are being tuned and soon the concert will start. Oh, we'd have got on well with my dad, Belinda said. He always used to talk like that. Bell wasn't very clear about her father. He'd been on a mission, then he'd been on the run, then he'd been in prison, then he'd been dead. But he did have his favourite saying. It was, Chucky Ola. Gus looked puzzled. My turn to translate Gus. It's Irish. It means, our day will come. Ah yes, the Irish Republican Army, Belinda. Did your father speak Irish? No, not so many in Northern Ireland do. But he had his few favourite sayings. I know that one I know that one well because he had a poster of it on our on our wall in the hall in Belfast. It was green, white and orange, black background, the same as the Irish flag. And those Irish words, Chucky or La, they were in bold black print across it. And underneath was a hooded figure with an armalite. Ah yes. All parties have their sayings, and when we're young we're vulnerable. If we're given evidence of oppression and we've got a sense of justice, politicians choose to shape that and use it for their own ends. Gus stared into the fire, into the flickering flames. Bell saw a troubled look. A look of darkness that seemed to drive the night's events away and put him into an even darker place. Bell wondered what there had been in that awful war that grieved him so much. Gus looked at her again. He composed himself. So tell me some more about Belfast. Well, Belfast was only my childhood. West, Bel West Belfast, well, it was pretty gloomy, really. I don't mean the people. The people were fantastic, but the atmosphere. Bell gathered up her memories of those times. Visiting her father at the Mays Prison, Long Cash. The walks to school with army patrols and paramilitary slogans. Brits out, peace with, just peace with justice. Some were amusing, she said. Support your local, local police beat yourself up. There was one mural on a gable end that she passed on her way to school that confused her, upset her. It was a picture of an IRA volunteer with a balaclava covering his face. He was holding a gun. She now knew it was an AK-47 assault rifle. Underneath the very artistic painting were the words IRA, Freedom, Justice, Peace. Young, De young Belinda Devlin had to pass this on the way to school and she, when she was not with her friends, she found it scary. One day, she, when she was about seven, she'd been going shopping with her granny. And when she got to this picture on the gable end of the wall, Granny Devlin had said, Look, Belinda, it's your da. Always be proud of him. She was proud of her dad because where she grew up, all her friends and family considered him to be a, a hero in an occupied country. And they were good to her English mum, and she remembered the day when she was about twelve, when Jerry Adams had been to the house to sympathise with her mother. She described Thomas Devlin, he, sorry, had described Thomas Devlin as a brave hero. He'd also hugged her widowed mother and told her she was an English woman with an Irish heart. That was quite a compliment from the leader of the IRA's political wing. Belinda remembered the riots. I joined in, Gus. Us kids did lifting bits of broken paving stones and hurling them at the police and the army. I'm afraid I was a child who liked the atmosphere of revolution. Ach, my daughter, so was I. Belle related the night that she'd been frightened as the army raided their house at five in the morning, and as they, tu as they turned the house inside out. Her mother had screamed at them, Get out of my house! Pigs! Murderers! Not, such because, not so much because she was an English woman with an Irish heart, but more because she loved her husband, who was afraid, frustrated and angry. She never really did get into Irish politics but she did see the Irish point of view because she lived right in the heart of it. Bell, on the other hand did understand Irish politics mostly from her grandmother. Her Irish granny had been, the, had been so strong in her feelings had she been the last person alive in West Belfast she would have fought to get the Brits out. Bell really thought the IRA were the people's heroes at 10 11, 12 years of age, 
and she'd really enjoyed the thrill of marches, demonstrations, riots. Oh, I think maybe that's why Mum moved us to England after my dad was shot on active service. She didn't want me to die in a hail of British bullets some day like my father had. So, Belle, do you still support the IRA? Gus, I hate violence. Let's just say I do understand them. I know what my dad was fighting for, and I know he was not a murdering terrorist, which is what the newspapers said about him. When he was shot, he was shot because he was an Irish patriot who died fighting for what he believed in. I wish he hadn't, but I won't disrespect his memory or condemn him for his brave sincerity. Mm, that is good, a man should have that from his daughter. Well, maybe you're right, Gus. But the trouble is, everyone thinks their cause is right. They all th think that God is on their side. Both sides in Northern Ireland think God's on their side. Yeah, like the Zionists. Gus was forgetting his companion's Jewish ancestry on her mother's side, but Belle didn't respond, hardly noticing his comment. How's your head this evening, Belinda? It's a bit sore. I wish it would heal up. Gus was concerned about that wound which had begun to heal and then begun to blister and bubble. He didn't want to alarm Belle, he, but he believed it needed attention. The British public grumble always about the National Health Service, but how much it's appreciated when it's not available. Gus was worried. What could he do about that festering wound upon Belinda's head? Thank you, my friends, for listening. I uh, hope this uh, West of England accent isn't driving you too mad. It's nice to share with you. Look forward to sharing some more in the next episode soon. Bye for now.